Hello everyone, today we want to create local push notifications like you see here in this picture. So we can have for example title, subtitle, some smaller image, a bigger image. And we also can have here in the corner a logo or an app icon and that's what we want to create now. Alright, therefore we go to pubdartlang.org and type in flutter location notifications. And then we go here down to the Android section something like Android integration and now we have to do some steps before we can use this plugin. First of all we need to allow some permission therefore we copy this here and then we go into our Flutter project then we go to the Android folder then app source main and Android manifest and here at the top after package we will directly put our permission inside with the local push notification plugin, we can, with this permission, listen if our phone is booted and then we can show the local notifications again on the phone. All right, there's also like a scheduled notification which you can use, but in this video we will not talk about scheduled notifications. So I will only put this vibrate here inside. All right, and we have to do something else. So we have to go to the resource folder of our Android application and here inside we have to go into the drawable folder and here we have to place an icon of our app. So we put our app icon here inside, paste it here into and it looks something like our Flutter logo. And it's really important that you put here this app icon inside because it's required on Android and this is this app icon which is shown here on the left side. So make sure that you have here your app icon. Let's go back to our plugin page. And we go again to the top of the page and then we go to the installing section and here we copy this dependency and put it into our Flutter project under dependencies in our pubspec.jml file. Let's put it here. And I will also add here this pass provider which I copy here inside. Just make sure that you also get it and then we click on packages get and after it we start our application. While this application is loading I can do something so we want to create a widget and therefore I create a new folder and inside we put our new widget which is called local notification widget. We will not have here a stateless widget so we will go with a stateful widget. I will convert it to a stateful widget and now we have to do some things here. First of all we have to get the init method. Now we have to initialize our plugin which we want to use for our notifications. All right, and I have copied this here inside this initialize code. We also need to get the important statement of our Flutter local notification plugin. So I go here and just copy it and put it here at the top of our application. Now there are some more errors and one is we need a method on select notification. So I will add this message here and we also need this instance here. So what is happening here? First of all, we initialize our local notification plugin. Here under it, we first of all create settings for Android and iOS. For Android, we have to pass here this app icon and it has to be the same name which we passed in our Android folder app source main and here in our resources folder under drawable. So we have to be careful that this has the same name as our icon which we put here before. For iOS we also have here some settings and after it we say to our plugin that they should initialize our settings from Android and iOS. We also have here a named parameter, something like on select notification. And what does this mean? So every time we have here our notification and we tap on this notification, this method will be executed. So he will go into this method here. We will get a payload which we can later set for this notification. And what we are doing then, we are navigating to a new page. So I will just import this second page. So I have created here this page, second page. And here you see that we have a second page which gets a payload. And this payload is then displayed on the screen. And we also have here a button so that we can go back from this navigation again. Now we have everything done for the initialization and now we want to add some push notifications to our application. The next thing what we do is we go to our build method and I will simply copy here something inside 
And what we got here is a list view and then we show simply a button. And after we press on this button, we want to show a notification. So every time we press on the button, we want to execute a method. And here we put our notifications inside, which is the initialized notification plugin. And then we say which message we want to display on the screen. So I will put a title inside and a body or a subtitle. And we want to create this show ongoing notification in a different file. So I will create here a new file, which is called local notifications helper. All right, first of all, we create here one method. This is like a private method because it's a general method. And here we put our initialized plugin inside and also a title, a body, later a type where we can put details and also an ID, which I will explain later. And then we simply have here this function show and with this we can show our notification on our screen. And now we want to create some subversion and therefore we create a new method which is called show ongoing notification and we simply call here this general method and we put here inside everything which we got from our parameters and also the ID. And then we want to create here this type, which is this notification details, which we want to create right now. So let's have a look inside. So you see here inside, we have to pass some Android notification details and iOS notification details, and I want to create it. And here at the top, I will just create this ongoing type. So we will return here notification details like it is here required for our type. Now what we have to do is we have to put the Android notification details and the iOS notification details together in one notification details. So again, we just put them here inside and here we can specify how this notification should be displayed on our Android device. And here we can say how it should be displayed on our iOS device. Here we put some basic information and after it we put here that this message should be important, high priority and to other things like ongoing and auto cancel. And I will simply execute it right now so that we can see what it does. All right, so I will simply have to import this file. And of course, we also need to go to our main and then put here local notification widget inside so that it is displayed on our screen. And then we hot restart the application and now we see here this button. All right, now let's press on this show notification and you will see that we get here a notification directly at the top. And it looks a little bit strange on this device. Maybe it's an older Android device. And here we have this title and body message which we have specified here in our title and body. We have here auto cancel set to false which means we cannot cancel our notification. So we can try to cancel or delete this notification. However, it wouldn't work because we have set this property. Another thing is we can set here ongoing to false instead of true. So I will hot restart the application. And if we click here again on show notification, you will see that it doesn't pop up anymore because we set here ongoing to false. So it will only open up in the background. So it will only be shown here in our system tray and not here on top. So I will change it back and we will create some new methods which will show more detail about how we can use this push notifications. Therefore, I will copy here another notification inside. This is no sound. And here we have the notification details and we also set here a show silent notification method. And here we also supply the title and body and everything is the same like before, only the type will change to no sound. And here in the no sound, we will simply have our Android notification details. And we say it for Android that the sound should not be played. And then we also say it for iOS that the sounds shouldn't be played. So it will be silent. We will execute this method later, show silent notification. So let's add it here to our uh, list view. I will add here another feature. So we add the silent notification and hot restart our application. And here we have this raise button. And if we tap on it, this show silent notification method will be executed. If you tap on it, there's no sound for the notification at all. So this is what you can also do. And you see that we have here got a second notification with silent title and silent body.
Another thing I added here is this cancel button. And here we simply say to our notifications plugin, which is again this property, which we have initialized in our init state method. And we say simply cancel all notifications. And I will just hot restart the application and we'll show you how this works. And now we have here this cancel all notifications, which is then calling this method cancel all. And if we do this, you will notice that these notifications on the top will disappear and there are no notifications anymore. Now let's add here another button to our basics. And this is a replace notification. And I will just hot restart it because it is calling the same method which we saw before. And it will also have some title and body. However, the method is quite the same. Only there's this different title and different body. And after the hot restart, I will simply call this show notification. Then we simply show this title and this body. And now what we can do is we can also replace this notification. Like you notice, we have this notification still open. And if we say replace notification, then you will notice that replace title, replace body. And if you then open this here up again, the other is gone. So we don't have here any more title and body, only replace title and replace body. So how does it work? Every notification which we push to our system tray has an identifier. And in this case, I have called this show ongoing notification. And here inside we have put this ID to zero. And both of these methods called this ID with zero. So both of these push notifications had an identifier with zero and so they replaced each other because they had the same ID. So what we can do is we can create here another notification and here we specify an ID which is not the same as the before ones. These base buttons will create push notifications with an ID of zero and this push notification will be created with an ID of 20. So let's try it out. I will hot restart this application. First of all, I cancel all notifications and then we will create here show notification again and I will click here on other notification and then you will see that we have here two notifications, one with an other title as a body, which is here this last other notification. So this is really important to set here an identifier if you want to have your independent notification. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.